do it. Hey guys, this is Versatile from Project Phoenix Media. So in today's video game tutorial, we're gonna be showcasing this program called UDP BD Server. It's basically a server that you run on your PC and then your computer is, let's say for example, connected to a router, your PS2 is connected to the router. If you have the right OPL file, what it does is it uses a different um, custom network protocol for the PS2 to run your games rather than use SMB. In general, I find it a little bit easier to use and I think the performance is better for, for your games as well. You just gotta try it out. So I have a link in the video description where you can download the OPL, which I already pre-installed on my memory card in advance of this video. And they also have a server for Windows and a server for Mac. Technically, there's also a server for Linux. It's not in this thread here, but I'll post it in the video description and where you can get that Linux version if you so desire. But for today's video tutorial, I'm using the Windows server version and I'm running Windows 11. Um, I do have the program enabled through the firewall, but if you have issues, you can certainly turn off your firewall for testing purposes, I suppose. So with that said, let's get started. So the server itself, I already have it downloaded to my C drive. I already extracted it, put it on my C drive. It would be easier for this tutorial purposes. And I have my USB thumb drive plugged in. So it looks like this right here. Here's my structure. We're gonna be testing a game today, which is Marvel vs. Capcom 2 in my DVD folder on the flash drive, the letter F as the drive letter. Okay, so what we're gonna do first is let's go into command prompt and run that program as administrator, say yes. And now I'm gonna to go to basically my root here. If I do dir, you'll see here's my program. So let's go ahead, run the program. And then the, the notation is slash slash period or dot slash and then typing your partition letter. So and in my case is F. And to reiterate, you could use a flash drive, you could use an internal drive or a virtual drive. Uh, those are all valid methods as well. So I press enter. This is the correct size for my thumb drive. So I know it's working so far. So let's just move this over here a little bit. Let me resize this a little bit because I'm going to be showcasing my PS2 capture screen. So let's see. Since I have a mod chip, the video display output sort of gets quirky sometimes. So just please bear with me. All right, here we go. Okay, so what we're going to do is I want to make sure the audio to PS2 is a little bit good here. So let's go to the open PS2 UDP BD. I made a shortcut already on my home screen there. So that's what I did. And let me show you some quick settings because that's one of the things that I did was watching other videos and I never fulfilled my curiosity of what was going on. So settings here, it is what I have. This is my default settings. Make sure under BDM start mode that uh, it's set to manual. And block devices is USB on. iLink and MX for ISO is off. And everything else doesn't really matter. Like literally network settings, I learned from the developer, this doesn't matter. Whatever I have here, it doesn't matter because what happens is the program is hard-coded from 192.168.1.10. And I already know that I have a good sign because before you even run the BDM server, you're supposed to see a response from the PS2, just like this command line here. If you don't see that, which I first uh, saw in the beginning when I first started this whole endeavor, it was because I had a direct cable method and my cable was bad. So when I replaced the cable, everything was good. But definitely router method, real easy to do. And uh, this works uh, pretty well. I will say that there might be some caveats using the Windows version. So if you have issues where your PS2 is not recognized or the server is not recognized or whatever, just restart the PS2, restart the Windows program. I can't say it's bug free, but most of the time it does work. Otherwise, hopefully the Linux version or the Mac OS version works as well. So here I'm gonna start the program. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I mean, I pressed start the BDM. It recognized my game that's on my USB, which is hosted through my PC, through the network. And pretty soon here, we'll see like these block size changes on the right-hand side. Do not close the terminal. If you close the terminal, you kill the session, you kill the game, basically. And now we wait. I've tested a limited number of games and they seem to work fine. I've read reports of other people where they had a game, didn't work on SAB that, that well, like uh, SingStar or something like that. And then you run it through this protocol and it's flawless. So that's pretty cool. Just make sure you're using the correct OPL version that has this implementation built in. So let's go ahead and select some characters here. So I like it overall because you don't have to mess with SMB shares, you don't have to mess with passwords. It's real simple. Just basically get a thumb drive or a flash drive or internal drive, whatever you want to do, load it up with games, um, get the server running, point it to where your, your all your games are, 
on the PS2 side, make sure you have OPL connected. Well, I mean, sorry, you have the right version of OPL installed, or however you want to launch it. Have it connect to your network. You can do through the router. You could do direct connect to your PC. If you want to do like a switch or a hub, I suppose you could do that too. Whatever you want to do, just make sure that when you run the server, it recognizes the PS2 OPL and you're good to go. So that's today's video game tutorial. If you guys have any nitpicky questions, they'll come here on the YouTube page. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Once again, thank you for watching. Take care. Bye.